agree. Well, way back in January, switching gears ever so slightly, we uh, broke the news that Paul Van Nordstrand was step stepping down as the Olympian football coach. And then, just a little last week, we kind of suspected this might happen. We certainly hoped it was going to happen. But guess what? Son Ryan is taking over for Dad. And what do you know? As promised, both Eagles are nesting here at KUSI for the next six minutes. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. How proud are you of him? Extremely proud. It's, uh, it's always Explain nice. why. Well, he's... Uh, uh, done such a good job with uh, everything that he's been uh, going through, and we're just so happy that he's gotten what he wants. It's been a goal of his, and he's gotten what he wants. Hans Graham, former Castle Park coach, wanted me to ask this question right off the top. Said, "Hey, remember, remind the kid that he wanted to play at Castle Park." <laughs> so that would have put the story all, all backwards. Yeah, that would have put a little damper in the story, but. Uh... Things worked out for a reason. All right. So uh, the reason why the story is so special to us is we feel like we're both part of your, your family family and the Eagles family because back in 2009, we ran the story. Van Nostrand has led his Eagles from the cellar to center stage. Seeing its growth from going 2-8 and eight the first year, you know, a group of sophomores playing you know, against men and now leading this program to a 7-0 start right now is a, such a great feeling. We cannot cite another example of a son featured on the PPR taking over his dad's program at the school he attended. You are in PPR history. I think you're in California State history. <laughs> it's, it's great to hear, um, especially with the, the idea of Olympian High School being a brand new school and, and being part of a, a group of kids that chose to go to Olympian when it was nothing but dirt. And so to come full circle uh, and be now the head coach, it, it's a great feeling. On, the, on Twitter, Chris Four from 8 Laces, he tweeted this out saying uh, he's been following coaching changes everywhere and he cannot re recall uh, a, a symbol like this where, f I mean, handing over the reins, you don't even have to change the nameplate on the uh, coach's door, do you? It's still there. It's all his. <laughs> so uh, talk a little bit about what have you learned from this man? Uh, I learned a lot. I think the first thing is the passion for the game. Uh, to, to understand not only the X's and O's, but what goes into being a successful coach. All the hard work you have to put in on sa Saturdays and Sundays and throughout the week. Um, Friday is just, just the dessert of it. And uh, the meat and the grind is, is definitely, you know, Saturday through Thursday. And so all those lessons and, and again, the passion for the game is something I, uh, you know, I take from him. What kind of program did you leave for him to inherit? Well, there's uh, quite a few kids coming back, and uh, the a good majority of the coaching staff is coming back. So he's not starting at scratch, and he's been a part of the program. So he's he's uh, he's seasoned. You know, we, we, we have video examples of famous father-son coaching duels. I, I think of the Ryans and the Shulas and whatnot. Well, it's just kind of a cool thing, isn't it, to, be, to keep the name going? Absolutely, absolutely. And plus you get more coaching out of him, do you not? <laughs> you know, I don't think in my whole life I'll ever stop being coached by him. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the best thing about it is just to be able to hang out with not only a coach, but my dad and an even better person. And so that's kind of the relationship I've, I've always loved and, uh, you know, continue, hopefully continue to have. What's the biggest challenge he faces? He's uh, uh, starting for the very first time as a head coach, and that's always a challenge. But regardless of how many years you've been coaching, it's, there's new challenges that, that you haven't faced before. And so dealing with those challenges, you know, take a little experience. John Carroll told me a story about once when he took over as a head coach and he had prepared, prepared, and it came time to call the first play, and he completely blanked and had to call, <laughs> call, call time out before his first play call ever. you got to make sure you have it written down on your wrist. Absolutely, absolutely, on a play card, something. Yeah. All right, so the other big story coming out of high school football today is that Rydell is uh, their precision helmet. The $1,700 per copy helmet is going to be released to high schools. Some high schools can afford it, others, most high schools can't. Right. So what's going to be the policy? How, how do you get one of these precision helmets? How do you get a team full of these precision helmets? You know what? Uh, we're going to talk to administration and whatever we can afford, we'll get. Um, but as long as the kids we feel are safe out there, um, you know, that's always the number one goal is for player safety. The other big thing that's going on in high school football right now is the proliferation of seven-on-seven -seven football. It started out as kind of a thing, you know, right. fluke. Now it's it's... It's part of the football fabric. Mm -hmm. Good thing, bad thing. You take that one? Um, I feel both ways. Uh, it's, uh, it's good that you get out with your kids and you have an opportunity to spend time with them and learn about their capabilities. And at the same time, there's a little bit of fake football in there. And as I yeah. said earlier, our defensive coordinator has always said, as soon as I can start blitzing and 
seven on seven, then I'll call it real football. But it's, you know, I've, uh, I like it in the fact that you get to see what your kids can do and, and you compete. And that's the big thing is you get a yeah. chance to compete against other people. You open the 2019 campaign, there could be easier places to start your season. Yeah. Going up to the hill to take on Baldwin's Ramona Bulldogs. Right. Uh, is that something you're counting down to in your uh, on your calendar? Yeah, I think as a team we've got that date circled. Um, you know, especially since they're the team that knocked us out last year. They're a great football program up there. Uh, he does a great job of getting his kids ready, and so it's going to be up to us and the coaching staff to make sure our kids are ready. I think we have some video of the 2018 squad. What changes are you guys going to keep it the same way? Does coaching staff remain intact? Does the playbook remain intact? Yeah, I've been fortunate. Uh, a lot of the coaches have agreed to come back, which is great. I feel like uh, we've had one of the best coaching staffs in the county, and so to have them come back uh, is going to be a great thing. So there's going to be a lot of things that are similar, and then obviously some of the things that I want to have my imprint on. And so we're going to take spring and, and, and see where things lay there and uh, make sure that we're putting the kids in the best position to be successful. I feel like I'm in an episode of The Courtship of Eddie's Father. O only you and I know what that is. <laughs> uh, yeah. You have no idea what we're talking about. No. <laughs> All right, so, so just uh, we'll, we'll conclude it with fatherly advice. L look at Ryan and tell him what he's got. What, one last piece of advice for the world to sit, share with. Just be yourself and uh, you know give everything you got. That's really all you can do. You Eagles, thank you for soaring into our new, uh, studio today. It, it means a lot that you would take time away. Appreciate it. We and appreciate uh, it. we will be there at that first game, I guarantee it. Tonight Sounds on the good. ASR, we're going to have all sorts of prep coverage coming away. Maddie Sinclair was also out at Aviara playing the 18th hole with an LPGA rising star. We'll have that for you as well. So concludes my sportscast. Back to my esteemed colleagues on the news desk.